Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So today's topic is going to be about Incus, which is the new LexD. Incus is a modern, secure and powerful system container and virtual machine manager. Incus is a community fork of canonical LexD created by Cypher and now part of the Linux containers project. Incus is also the name of the anvil, which is the middle of the three small bones in your middle ear. The Incus transmits vibrations from the malleus to the stapes, and the vibrations then move to the middle ear. So I'm going to say that the choice of the name Incus had a lot to do with having a project that would listen to the end users. So the initial release of Incus is roughly equivalent to LexD 5.18, but with a number of changes on top of the obvious rename. And the API for LexD is in forward slash dev forward slash LexD, and Incus will be located at forward slash dev forward slash Incus. So the initial release notes for Incus 0.1 are located at the URL that you see here, and I'll make sure and include that in the show notes. So what are the differences between Incus and LexD? Well, the legacy REST API from the initial LexD release back in 2015 is now removed and is also removed from the Go client packages as well things like that LexD client that we had in Windows that I made a presentation about recently. And the new API's location is forward slash dev forward slash Incus as a part of the rename, as I had mentioned earlier. So support for the core dot trust underbar password has been removed in favor of tokens, TLS, or external authentication. And it was high time that this took place. You'll recall that when you used to do a LexD init, one of the questions you were asked towards the end is for a trust password. Although in my recent presentations, I showed you how to use a authentication token and assign it instead since it's more secure. So the Incus snapshot subcommand which has commands like Incus snapshot create, delete, list, rename, and restore, replaces the very convoluted solution in LexD, which didn't have command symmetry at all. I found myself trying to do snapshots going back to the CLI and having to refer to the documentation all the time. So this is a very welcome change. And the new Incus admin command has a number of switches as well. It's Incus admin cluster, init, recover, shutdown, and wait ready. And they remove things like the LexD init command. Did anyone else think it was a little bit odd to have LexD init to set up a LexD server? Yet all of the other commands were LexC. I found it very uh, complex and uh, confusing and people always ask me, why was the command not LexD? And the initial answer to that was because they were based on LexC containers. So Ubuntu specific features like ShiftFS, which is a way of mapping UIDs and GIDs to containers, candid authentication and role-based access control, as well as the metal as a server, uh, metal as a service integration or MOS, are now also removed from Incus since those are more Ubuntu specific and there are more integrations with canonical projects. So people sticking to LexD are probably more interested in integrations with canonical projects, whereas people that are migrating to Incus are looking for more of an open source solution where the server is handled the same on various distros and then being able to create containers of various distros will never be an issue. So LexD and Incus can run on the same server, according to Stefan Grabler, who was the original maintainer 
for uh, Lex D at Canonical. He left Canonical and now he's a key individual in the Incus project. And there is also a LexD to Incus tool, which I plan on covering in the future, which can be used to transition from LexD to Incus. And right now that's promised to be able to do conversions between LexD from version 4 on up to LexD version 5.18, which is the current version. Of course, that's subject to change because it's we're not entirely sure when we're going to start to see the two projects diverge and the uh, features uh, become different amongst them. So here we are in a system where I have LexD installed. And if I do a LexC list, we have two LexD containers. Now, if I do a if config command and scroll to the top, we have my Bridge Zero device, which I cover on my video entitled LexD Step by Step. The physical device is ENP5S0, which I'm not giving an IP address. I have my loopback connector. I have my LexD BR0, which is the bridge for LexD containers to communicate from the NAT network that they're on by default out to the main network for outbound connection. And then I have two virtual ethernets, one for each of the two containers that I have created in LexD. So let's install Incus. We're gonna start with a sudo su to become the root user. Go ahead and type in my password and then we're going to add a key to the key ring. We've done that. And now the next step is we have to go ahead and add the repository uh, to the system to use that particular key ring we just downloaded. We've done that. And I'll go ahead and exit back out. And I'll do a sudo apt update. And it will go ahead and process the updates to the repository list. So I realize I have two updates there. I believe they're unimportant. So I'm going to go ahead and install Incus. And I do that with a sudo apt install Incus. Go ahead and say yes. Before we use Incus, the first step that we're going to perform is an Incus admin init, which is a lot like the LexD init that we did in LexD. When we do this, it comes back and tells us failed to connect to local daemon. The reason that we're getting that error is because Incus requires you to be an admin and like we used to add users to the LexD group before to do admin commands, with Incus, I'm going to say sudo add user scott incus dash admin, and that adds me to the admin group. And then in order for that group to take effect without having to log off and log back in again, I'm simply going to do a new grp incus dash admin, and now we're going to go back up again and try to do the incus admin init command. And it should work. And it works if you type it in correctly. There we go, live video. So would you like to use clustering? We're going to say no. Would you like to configure a new storage pool? We're going to say yes. So by default, the new storage pool is called default, but I've already installed LexD on this system also, and it uses a storage pool called default. So I'm going to call this storage pool Incus-Default just to differentiate between the two of them. Would you like to use a local area network bridge? Yes, I would. By default, it's going to call that Incus-BR0, which is fine. And then what IP address should be used? I'll leave that as auto for both IPv4 and IPv6. Would you like it to be available over the network? The answer is yes. It would be nice to be able to do network um, management. And then the address to bind to, I'll say is all. 
and the port to define to bind to would be 8443 by default but since we're running lexd on this particular node i'm going to have to pick a different port so i'll just say 8445 and we'll remember that we did that later on would you like to uh, stale cached images to be updated the answer is yes and do you want to print out the YAML that executes this? And no, I do not. So it goes ahead and finishes that init. So let's go ahead and create our first container. And we'll do that with Incus launch images colon Ubuntu forward slash 22.04. I'm calling the name of the container Incus1. And I'm putting in the switch boot dot auto start equals to true, which means that every time this server boots, it starts this Incus container. So it says creating Incus container and it does the pull and then it goes ahead and starts it up. We'll go ahead and create a second container the same way and we'll call it Incus2 and it goes ahead and performs the same operation. Now we can do a Incus list and we'll see our two containers and you can see that they're running at local addresses inside of the NAT, which is the 10.214.211 network. Now, suppose I want to create containers on the main LAN. I would need a profile to do so. And I'm going to go ahead and name my profile bridged main. So I say Incus profile create bridged main and it creates a main profile. Secondly, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add to that main profile with an Incus profile device add, bridge dash main, ETH zero, NIC with NIC type equals to bridge, and the bridge goes through the parent called bridge zero. So it adds that on there too. Let's go ahead and use that new profile with a container called Incus Three, the command to create Incus 3 will be Incus create images colon Ubuntu 22.04 Incus 3 boot dot auto start is equal to true. We add the default profile for the root file system and then we add the bridged main profile to present this container out onto the main LAN. Now if we do a Incus list we have container Incus 3 and we just did a create up there you'll notice and I did not do a Lex or an Incus launch that's a tongue twister I keep wanting to say Lex D I did not do an Incus launch I did an Incus create so now I can do an Incus start on Incus 3 and it will go ahead and start that container up and after waiting the requisite amount of time if I simply do an Incus list we can see Incus 3 operating at 172.16.1.159, which is an address on the main LAN. If we look back at the host now and we do an if config command, we still have the bridge zero device, which is receiving the address through which everything is communicating. ENP5 S0, which is the physical device on the host, but we're not granting it an address. Same thing that I did back in my Lexd step-by-step -step video. And then we have an Incus BR0, which is the bridge for the NATed containers in Incus. We have the loopback connector, and right below it we have Lexd BR0, which is a similar bridge to Incus BR0 for the NATed containers. And then we have five VETH devices and the reason we have five is because we have two LexD containers and three Incus, Incus containers. And with the three Incus containers and the two LexD containers, that makes five. So I copied a LexD container export file over here, and it's named heimdall.tar.gz. And with the command incus import heimdall.tar.gz over to Heimdall, we should be able to import that container into Incus. 
Now that the Heimdall container is imported into Incus, I should be able to do an Incus list command. And there, sure enough, we have a Heimdall up here, which has been imported, but of course it's stopped. So I can do an Incus start on Heimdall. And Heimdall should go ahead and start up. And now this Heimdall container was a container that used the bridged main profile to go out to the main LAN. And now I do an Incus list command. And sure enough, Heimdall is running at 172.16.1.100, which is the address that it was running on under LexD. So I just want to remind all the subscribers that Incus is a version 0.1 release. I would not move everything into production yet. However, it might be worthwhile for you to try it out. And hopefully this guide provides the basics that you need to get started. So in summary, Incus is an open source virtualization platform now supported by linuxcontainers.org whereas LexD which used to be within linuxcontainers.org has moved over to Canonical for its support. And the future of LexD will be as a Canonical product likely to focus on integration with Ubuntu and MOS as well as other Canonical projects. So for the foreseeable future, there's no real difference between LexD and Incus other than what I have mentioned here in this presentation. And Incus is a 0.1 release as of October 2023, and we can only sit back and watch it and see where it's going to go from here. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.